Hey everyone, this week for Fermentation Friday, I wanted to do an experiment. I wanted to see what happens when you don't use the SCOBY patty culture when you brew kombucha. I'd been reading online that you don't really need to use it and that the kombucha brew will work out just as well without having it because the SCOBY, the symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast is actually just what's inside the kombucha tea itself. So the part of the brewing process that's the most important and the most needed isn't actually the, the white disc layer that floats on top, but just the starter tea itself. So I wanted to test that out and see what would happen if I just brewed my kombucha without putting in the the mother. And I was really impressed with how it worked out. I have a diary of the a couple days process through and I actually grew my nicest SCOBY that I've I've ever had and I'm I'm really happy with it and it brewed just as quickly and there's there's a good chance that I probably won't keep using the the scobies over and over again. I'll maybe keep one floating on top just keep, you know, basically just a cover. I know my brew gets a little bit carbonated with having it on there, so you know, probably keep it going, but yeah, definitely very impressed and I hope that it'll help you guys out if you don't have access to the SCOBY 2, if all you can get is some kombucha tea. So check it out. All right, so it's been two days. I didn't even think to do any filming on this on the first day, but if you can see, there's already a little bit of a gel layer forming on there. You can kind of see when I move it, there's just a, super thin little layer in there and a little bit of a uh, little bit of yeast that made it in that's kind of building up over there in the corner but yeah amazed to see without there being the scoby in there that there already is so much going on you can see a little bit of, of white stuff kind of right in the in the center of it there and that isn't anything to be worried about that is just bubbles forming underneath that thin layer so a uh, pretty surprising amount of activity for just for just two days i'm excited to see how long it's going to take to form this i'm thinking it might actually only take about a week okay so i'm at day four now on this scoby being grown from only only kombucha and it's it's looking pretty thick already you can kind of see from the side here it's not quite that thick there's just a little bit of the liquid that covered it when i moved it but there's a pretty good shot of the fact that there's there's a nice layer built up pretty pretty surprising to me because this like i said is only day four so i didn't think there'd be that much over here i got a little bit of little bit of something going on. This is just the yeast that was inside of of my uh, kombucha and it kind of bubbled up and then stuck to the scoby that formed there. So this right here kind of lets me know that maybe I need to clean out my, my uh, kombucha container because that is definitely too much yeast to be in there because there's also a little bit little bit of yeast sediment down on the bottom as well. But yeah, I mean, I'm gonna leave this for the full week and then I'll test it. But I'm, I'm really surprised at how much of a SCOBY there is already. So we're at day eight on this. And as you can see, this has definitely gotten a pretty nice looking little, little SCOBY forming on the top there. You know, I still have that, that yeast in there and, and there is a little bit more two underneath you can kind of see it building up but definitely nothing wrong with that there's there's also a little bit of the yeast sediment down here on the bottom but yeah this no scoby and then then look at that that looks definitely looks pretty good okay let's let's take a look at it from from the top look at that looking nice 
My son's just grabbing. He loves canning rings. Uh, yeah, that's mommy's. Thank you. Yeah, so this is definitely the nicest SCOBY that I've ever grown. It, it's super nice and super clean looking from the top. It has that nice creamy look of everyone else's that I'm always jealous of on the internet. And it smells really good. I haven't tasted this yet, but I am thinking that it is at the point that it's probably finished. And yeah, I mean, I definitely say they're right. You do not need anything except for kombucha to grow the, the culture. And if anything, it seems like, you know, this, if you have any issues with your culture that you have, you know, I'd, I'd just ditch it. You know, I'm almost thinking at this point, like, to have a, to have a hotel is useful in case you do have an issue of, you know, fruit flies or anything getting inside of your, your culture, and then you have to ditch it, but, I mean, just having a second, second container brewing at any given time seems like it's also going to do the exact same thing. So, I would say pretty clear that no, you do not need, you do not need the mother to have a proper jar of kombucha brewed. Um, and that, yeah, go for it. I, 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 this is with my home brew, so I know that there was plenty of live culture inside of it. I would be interested in redoing this experiment again with a store-bought, with a store-bought culture, but yeah, pretty impressed with that SCOBY there. Okay, just to quickly show you the, the SCOBY comparison. So this is what my, my, you know, made from SCOBY culture top looks like and then this is my made with just the kombucha culture top so I mean you can definitely see how nice that looks this one's all weird weird and foamy and dark whereas this one's just that nice clean creamy creamy layer thanks so much for joining me this week every Friday we do fermentation videos on a variety of different fermentation subjects and it's always done in a diary style like this is because obviously I'm I'm just a beginner I'm just learning everything so if you'd like to check out more of our ferments make sure to subscribe and if you want to see what we've already fermented check out our playlist